back and up again. young woman by the name of Shanisha Taylor was arrested and charged with two counts of child abuse for leaving her two children inside of a hot car while she went into a place of business on an interview. When Miss Taylor story hit the news and the cameras caught her in front of the courthouse with tears streaming down her face and the American public became aware of her story about how she was a single mother uh, who was homeless and did not have any family that would watch her children, neither did she have any money to pay anybody to watch her children while she went on the interview. So she had no choice other than to put her children in a car and take a chance at taking them on the interview with her. All because she just wanted to feed her family. And the American 
people heard this story, people were moved with compassion. And they donated generously well over $114,000 in support of Miss Taylor's defense. When the presiding judge realized what the American people had done for this woman, he too was moved with compassion. And he told Miss Taylor, ma'am, I am willing to drop all the charges against you and admit and dismiss your case under a few conditions. First, you must attend some substance abuse courses. But in time, on top of that, I want you to use a portion of those donations and put it into a trust fund for your children. Just assure her that if you comply with my instructions, all of the charges that have been brought against you will be dropped and you will do no jail time. She was satisfied with that answer. And she got her hands on that well over one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. And she began to get a hat done. And she began to get a nail done. And she began to, to buy her some stiletto. Did I get that right? She, she began to buy her some designer's clothes and diamond earrings. And she began to pay for her boyfriend's rap album. And, and, and she began to flash and spend money for the wrong reason. But now that I, as our court date is quickly approached, the judge wants to know where the trust fund. And not only does the judge want to know where the trust fund, all those people who donated to her cause, they want to know what you did with the money we gave you. Uh -huh. The fact of the matter is, she just don't have it. In fact, she's so broke that she had to get a court-appointed attorney. There she was on TV again, with cracking down tears, asking people to donate once again to her cause. But in the situation she's in now, she has lost the faith of the American people. And nobody but nobody is willing to donate to her cause. She's broke with a court appointed attorney and nobody that's willing to support her claim. She's in a situation now that only God can get her out of. There's nobody to give her any money. No lawyer really wants to take the case. And her family is disgusted at what she did. They don't even want to be by her side. And, and, and the only person that can save her now is God Almighty. Likewise, ladies and gentlemen, I have discovered that the entire human race is in the same situation that Shanisha Taylor is found, has found herself in. Uh, no, no, we ain't broken, we ain't hungry, we not facing prison time, but we all have a sin problem that can't nobody help us with but God. We all have a problem with sin. And can't nobody help us with the problem that we have but God. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how educated you are. Your education can't get you out of the problem that you're in. 
God for salvation. I hear what you're saying, Brother Reverend Pastor Preacher, that I got a problem that can't nobody help me out of but God, but why should I depend on God for salvation? I'm glad that you asked. Because here in our selected text, Romans chapter 9, verses 6 through 13, I believe that the Holy Spirit makes known to us why it is both you and I should depend on God for salvation. First, you should depend on God for salvation because the word of God cannot fail. Thank you, Lord. I thought you shout right there. I, 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 that you will lift all the hands and run all around the sanctuary to know that you should depend on God because the word of God cannot fail. Translation, if God says he's going to do it, you can go to bed at night because God is going to do just what he said. He is going to do the word of God cannot fail. Grace us with your presence on last week. God allowed us to speak from the subject of the hope of Israel. In which we learn that Jesus Christ is the God of Israel. Not only is Jesus Christ the God of Israel, but Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel. And despite the fact that the vast majority of the Jewish population reject the fact that Jesus Christ is the God of Israel, and despite the fact that the vast majority of the Jewish population reject the fact that Jesus Christ is their Messiah, does not have any effect on whether or not it is true. For that reason, Paul opens Romans chapter 9, verse 6 with my favorite word in the whole wide world. That three-letter contrasting conjunction. But, I, I, I like that word. Despite the fact that the Jewish people do not accept Jesus Christ as their God, despite the fact that the Jewish people do not accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. But this does not mean the word of God has failed. Do you see that in verse 6? But it is not as though the word of God has failed. Word fail here in the text comes from a compound Greek word that simply means to lose power. It simply means to lose authority or it means to lose its usefulness. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, when Paul says, but it is not as though the word of God has failed, what he simply said is whether you believe God's word or not, it has no effect on whether or not the word of God is true. Whether you accept the word of God for what it is, it doesn't mean that it's true because you don't agree with it. Whether you believe the word of God or not, whether you decide to live your life by God's word or not, does not mean it ain't true. God doesn't Neither does he need me to validate the fact that he is God. God is God all by himself. Oh, okay, I don't think y'all feel the tension of the text. Many times we look at people and we think they go to church every Sunday, but they don't do no better. So God's word must not have no power. Uh-uh. On the contrary. Whether they decide to live a righteous life or not, whether they decide to accept Jesus Christ or not, whether they decide to praise God or not, God's word cannot fail. 
wrong translation. If anybody going to be saved, it's going to take God to do it. But Paul said, somebody plants, somebody else waters, but ultimately it's God that gives the increase. Word of God cannot fail. Whether you believe God's word or not, it cannot fail. Whether you accept God's word or not, it cannot fail. Whether you decide to live your life by the word of God or not, know this. Word of God cannot fail. How do you know that, Paul? Paul answers. He says, because of four. They are not all Israel who are descendants from Israel. Paul uses a literary device here called a metonymy. He uses the same word twice, but each time he uses it, it means something different. The first time Paul uses the word Israel, but they are not all Israel. He's referring to Israel as an entire nation. Israel as a whole. Israel as one people under God. But then he uses the word Israel a second time in the same verse. But the second time Paul uses the word Israel, he's not referring to Israel as one entire nation, but he's referring to the patriarch Jacob. The book of Genesis helps us to realize that God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And it simply means one who wrestles with God. Paul said, not everybody that is from the nation of Israel came from Jacob. I thought you'd be excited about that. Because some people think that in order to be saved, you have to be a descendant of Jacob. Some people think that in order to be saved, you got to be born in the Holy Land. But Paul tells us here in the text, everybody that is a part of God's chosen people didn't come from Jacob. All right. Um, who are descendants of Israel? No. Are they all children of Abraham? We all didn't come from Jacob. We all didn't come from Abraham. Now, not even everybody that came from Jacob and Abraham, Paul said, not everybody fears God. They came from Abraham, they live in the land of promise. You call them God's people, but they're not really all God's people. I, I, I need you to get that. We know that Abraham had more descendants than just Isaac. Genesis, the book of Genesis, helps us understand that Abraham's wife, Sarah, was barren. That is, she was incapable of having children. So she, Sarah, came up with this beautiful idea that Abraham ought to go and lay down, I'm trying to be politically correct here, and lay down with her handmaiden, Hagar. So Abraham took her up on this once in a lifetime offer that your wife would give you the okay to go in to her hand me. Uh -huh. Abraham conceived a son with Hagar and had a boy by the name of Ishmael. But Ishmael was not the son of promise because God told Abraham that you are going to have a son with your wife Sarah. God was faithful to that word. Abraham, in his old age, conceived a child with his wife, Sarah. But the Bible informs us that after Sarah died, Abraham took another wife.
and he had children with her as well. That is the context of what Paul is saying here. Abraham has more than one descendant, but it's only one descendant that God promised him, and that is Isaac. Yes, Lord. And in order to be connected to God, you got to be connected to the promise.
or listen to the news. I mainly watch it to see how the weather's going to be and how things are going to go. And this past week, the weatherman, he said, take your umbrella with you every day. That's what the weatherman said. So, so that's what I did. I opened my closet. I pulled out that white and blue umbrella. And I took my umbrella with me every day. And Monday came, no rain. Tuesday, he said, take your umbrella with you. I picked my umbrella up, took my umbrella. Tuesday came, no rain. All week long, it only rained two days. But the weatherman said it was going to rain every day. What I'm saying, we're trying to get you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is the word of man may happen, yeah. and it might not happen. Yeah. No, I mean, if the word of man, it, it, it might follow through, yeah. and it might fall through. But when God speaks his word, you can go ahead and slow and go God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It just can't fail. It, it just can't fail. I'm 
Isaac, Genesis chapter 25, Isaac marries Rebecca. Rebecca is married. Genesis chapter 25 lets us know that Isaac prayed for his wife because he wanted his wife to have children. God heard the prayer of Isaac and allowed Rebecca to be pregnant with twins. Re Re Rebecca prayed and asked God, what is the meaning of these twins on the inside of me? And God informed them that there are two nations that are growing on the inside of you. And he says, one of them will be a great nation and the other one will be a servant to the younger one. And, and Paul makes it clear that God made his sovereign choice before they were born.
27, Isaiah proclaims, who can annul the plan of God? Now you do know what annul means. It means who can move the plan of God? Isaiah simply saying that what God has set in motion, a stop sign can't stop it. <laughs> what God has set in motion, a red light can't stop it. What God has set in motion, rebellious sinners cannot stop.
Thank you.